This video is made possible by NordVPN. Start protecting your internet experience today with 77% off a three-year plan by using the code BRAINFOOD at nordvpn.com forward slash brainfood. So today, we're answering a viewer question because Julia C asks, why do you get a lump in your throat when you're sad? If you've ever been subjected to watching The Notebook with your spouse, you might have experienced an uncomfortable lump in your throat as you attempt to breathe heavy and avoid crying like a little kid who just skinned his knee. You might wonder, well, what causes the feeling of that lump in your throat? And for that matter, why do we cry when we're sad? The lump in your throat has a rather easy explanation compared to crying when emotionally upset. Known as the globus sensation, the feeling is the result of a battle between the opposing forces of muscles attached to your glottis, the opening between your vocal cords. It tends to present itself when sad or when you swallow or hold your breath in order to avoid crying. There are only two autonomic nervous systems in your body, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic being your fight or flight nervous system, and the opposing parasympathetic being stimulated by resting and relaxing, your feed and breed nervous system. When you begin feeling upset or have any stressful experience, your body stimulates its sympathetic nervous system via the HPA axis. This axis involves a connection between your hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and your adrenal glands. It will release hormones into your bloodstream, causing things like increased heart rate, blood pressure, and metabolism. It will then sense it needs more oxygen to maintain that experience. It's your sympathetic nervous system at work when you try to avoid breaking down and it feels like you've swallowed a golf ball. Your body responds to this sympathetic drive by opening your glottis via the posterior cricoarytenoid and thyroarytenoid muscles. The result gives a larger opening for oxygen to enter your lungs. When you try to hold your breath to avoid sobbing, your lateral cryoretinoid, areapiglottic, and thyroepiglottic muscles constrict, struggling to close off your glottis. These opposing forces cause the sensation of a giant lump in your throat. Crying, or more specifically, shedding tears in response to an emotional stimulus, well, that's a much more complex issue. To begin with, tears are produced by the almond-shaped lacrimal glands located on the outside portion of your orbit. Depending on the type of stimulus, the glands will produce three different tears. The first kind are basal tears. They get released every time you blink, serving to lubricate the eye and keep it free from dust or from drying out. The second type are reflex tears. They get released in response to an irritant, such as can be introduced when cutting onions. And if you want to learn more about that, we've got a link below to another video we did called Does Cutting Onions Make Your Eyes Water? Fascinating stuff. Check it out. Well, these two types of tears are composed of pretty much the same stuff. Things like water, salt, potassium, lipids, and the antibacterial lysozyme. Emotional tears are a different thing altogether. There doesn't seem to be a consensus among researchers as to exactly why they spring up. Their makeup does, however, provide some clues as to their origin. For instance, they contain hormones like ACTH, adrenocorticotrophin hormone, and prolactin, 20-25% more protein groups and 30 times more manganese than normal tears. ACTH is the hormone released by your HPA axis when your sympathetic nervous system is in charge. Prolactin is also elevated in response to stress. Manganese has long been known to help regulate your mood, and those who are constantly depressed will usually have higher levels in their bloodstream. Emotional tears also contain leucine enkephalin. This is an opioid peptide giving you the same painkilling effects that morphine does. On that note, some posit that crying in response to having your sympathetic nervous system stimulated by an emotional event has evolutionary benefits, in that it's a way for humans to signal the need for help during trying times. Or perhaps empathy, as in the case of James Garner's character Noah, when his children ask him to come home as his wife and their mother doesn't recognize him or know he's there anyway. In response, he says, look guys, that's my sweetheart in there. I'm not leaving her. This is my home now. Your mother is my home. If this is true, then the presence of ACTH and prolactin could account for that. Women generally have higher levels of prolactin in their bodies, so this could be the reason why women cry on average five times more than men. Chronically depressed people seem to cry more often, and they also tend to have higher levels of manganese in their system. Others point out the 
healing benefits of the act as the main reason why we cry. First off, there is the aforementioned presence of leucine and kephalin, giving you the mood-lifting feelings that any opiate would. Secondly, there are plenty of studies showing the calming effects of crying, leading many to argue it's an involuntary way our bodies can calm down from a stressful event. This theory is furthered by studies showing that if you disable nerves that stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, you will cry more. Should you damage the important nerves involved with the parasympathetic nervous system, you will cry less. This would lead one to conclude that it's not the stressful event that triggers the crying, but the need for our ancestors to calm down after a stressful event, helping to make sure they don't die of a heart attack from the continual fight-or-flight response. But you know what else gives me a lump in my throat from fear? That would be hackers. Every day in the news we hear about the latest hack or data breach. Not a good thing, but the good news is that you can protect yourself with a VPN, and that's where NordVPN comes in. Have you ever been sitting in a cafe with some open Wi-Fi network and wanted to check your internet banking? Well, don't even think about it without a VPN. Or let's perhaps say that you're a British man living in a foreign country and you wanted to watch BBC News, but it's only available in the UK. Theoretically, said person could use NordVPN to watch that BBC News, or sports, or other things. NordVPN is so super fast, watching video is an absolute breeze. No lag whatsoever. If you've ever used VPNs and thought they were slow, well, no more with NordVPN. And you can use it on all of your devices very, very easily. Android, Chrome, Windows, Linux. I've never used Linux, but if you do use it, you can use Nord, and you can use it on six different devices all at once. So if you've got Linux and Windows and Apple, all of them on one account. Also, they don't keep any logs unlike other companies based in the EU or US because NordVPN is based in Panama, so they don't have to keep logs at all. And that is great for your privacy. Indeed, they are the only VPN to get a perfect score from PC Mag. So start protecting your internet experience today with 77% off a three-year plan by using the code BRAINFOOD at nordvpn.com forward slash brainfood. And thanks to NordVPN for the sponsorship. So, if you're looking for something else to watch right now by us, though, you can check out Why Do We Get Ice Cream Headaches, another one of those weird medical questions we answer. You can find a link to that on the screen now, as well as below. Also, subscribe to this channel. There's a link on the screen now, as well as that. But you know what to do by now, and hit that bell so you actually learn about our daily videos. And as always, thank you for watching.